Yo guys, Blue Knots here, and welcome back to a very special Kelly Classical Preview. So of course, as I said before, this is a very special preview that I do, and this is obviously the first Quakes preview that I have ever done on my YouTube channel. I usually do these kind of Quakes preview on my Periscope stream, but I decided that in my last stream, I thought, you know what, since this is the Cali Classico, and it's... Usually, this is the biggest Cali Classico game out of the entire free, mainly because this is the game where there's going to be 50,000 people that's going to be there to cheer on the Quakes, and I thought it's such a big game, I just had to do it in a YouTube video. So here I am. I am, of course, doing it into a YouTube video, and I'll tell you what, I am absolutely pumped to do this kind of preview. I mean, I'm as pumped as doing this video than actually going to the actual game, which I will go tomorrow um, and of course I will do one of the best match vlog that I will ever done I know that the last Cali classical where I done my match vlog I actually got about 250 views I mean I know probably you're watching this video and thinking oh 250 views whoop de do but considering the fact that my match vlog are usually only averaging about like 50 or 60 views 250 views on a Cali classical match vlog back in May was a lot of views and a lot of likes too and a lot of people also commented the video so I would also like to say a big thanks to everybody that watched this video and even though that video didn't really end as the way I was hoping with which of course was a W in that game you know I was very proud that a lot of people actually watched the video and a lot of people actually liked the video and that is why this vlog this match vlog I'm hoping it's gonna be the same thing now talking about this Cali Classico game obviously before I'm actually gonna talk about the actual game let me just talk exactly about the situation with the quakes because I know I have talked about this a lot of times in my uh, Periscope stream but I usually never talk about this in my YouTube video or never even mentioned it okay so this is for all of you that don't watch my Periscope stream and I've got to tell you make sure next time you actually go on Twitter follow me on Twitter and of course you will not miss a Periscope stream because you will get a notification for whenever I am on live on that Periscope stream but yeah, let's actually talk about what has been going on with the Quakes lately because there's been a lot has gone on and one of the first thing I will say about the Quakes so far is that this is of course the beginning of a new era. Okay, technically the beginning of the new era happened uh, yesterday, well not yesterday, but the last match we were playing against the Sounder because our new manager Chris Leach has just taken over and so far it's got off to a pretty good start. We got a, a good victory against the Seattle Sounder, we're moving on to the next round of the US Open Cup but now this is really the real deal I mean I know I already got a sample size a one game sample size of what exactly he want to do with this quicks team but the problem with that is that in that game against uh, the Seattle Sounder in the US Open Cup it was against a very kind of weak Seattle Sounder team it was against a B and C team and we also use a very kind of unusual formation that Usually a lot of MLS team doesn't want to use and that of course is the free for free formation um, And I think that's the second US Open Cup game in a row where we play free at the back So I'm just wondering are we actually gonna use this formation at least once in any of the MLS game? Or we're we just gonna keep using it just for a US Open Cup, but you know, I just wondering coming into this game It's probably we're probably not gonna be using the free for free formation. I mean I doubt we're actually gonna do do it mainly because I just don't know if we're gonna if we're gonna do very well with that formation I mean that game against the Sounders um, Yes, obviously we did kind of press a lot and we did put a lot of pressure on them But keep in mind that game, you know the Seattle Sounders They were down to 10 men for majority of the game and they were of course as I said many times playing against their B and C team So yeah, that of course you of course are gonna be dominating possession You are of course trying to trying to get that goal and also the fact that for, for the second half we, since it was like 1-1 we were trying to put so much pressure on them to trying to get that breakthrough goal which we eventually did in the 84th minute but you know those are kind of games that I'm pretty sure will not happen when if it's actually 11 versus 11 and when you're playing a pretty good 
LA Galaxy 8. Now in terms of course how the LA Galaxy are doing coming into this game, obviously they of course are coming off with a loss against Sporting KC in the league and that game was uh, pretty much uh, the end of a very good run that they were on that began in May and continue into June and that good run actually propelled them as high as fifth place in the league so they obviously is a very dangerous team and I think this Galaxy team you know I know against Sporting KC they they made a couple of very crucial mistakes especially in the goalkeeper situation where you know they probably should not have dropped points and that if their goalkeeper was actually a little bit decent and of course I'll talk a little bit more about the goalkeeper situation with them but you know this is a team that is very very dangerous and it isn't seem like this is the same Galaxy team that really struggle early on in the season and they're really kind of like picking up where they expect it to be this season. Now, of course, talking about the goalkeeper situation with them, that is one thing we need to take advantage of it, okay? I'm pretty sure they're probably going to start uh, Diop as their goalkeeper. So you know what the Quakes got to do in this game? We have to test him straight away. I mean, you saw the game against Sporting KC and how he made that. The first goal that he conceded was just an absolute howler. I mean, one of the sporting KC player pretty much shot from like 35 yards out and it looked the shot wasn't even that kind of strong I mean it kind of like bounced off the ground a little bit and all Diop has to do is just kind of like catch the ball but instead guess what he did he literally punched the ball down and basically it hits it into the back of the net so for of course if I'm of course the Quakes and after seeing the the struggle that Diop had in the last game I would say that whatever you do in this game try to test Diop as much as possible Okay, you know, there's been many times when I see the Quakes how they haven't really take a lot of shot from outside the box They usually always have to take a shot from inside the box for me I think in this game they just have to fire away because you never know like you never know the the that Diop is gonna make a mistake and you know that he is a very vulnerable goalkeeper to concede goal now of course the other thing that I would say coming into this match that the Quakes will need to contain is that we have to to contain Gio Dos Santos. I mean, Gio Dos Santos has becoming a villain for us lately because he has been one of probably one of the biggest nemesis that we had in the last couple of games. I mean, in the last game, he scored two goals against us, okay? He scored a brace against us. We know the fact that he tends to love to score against us. So that is one of the guys that we just have to contain him. And I'm hoping the Chris Leach will address that and I hope the players will acknowledge that that we can let Gio Dos Santo an inch of space. Let's actually talk about the starting lineup in this game and this is where it gets really interesting and this is where you know, again, I really don't know what exactly Chris Leach is going to do in terms of the formation. Yes, I know that he started the 3-4-3 formation, but I really doubt he's going to use that for same formation. I'll be very surprised if he actually does that, mainly because not many teams nowadays in the MLS have tried the 3-4-3 four, formation in games, and usually when they do try it, it hasn't worked out very well. So I expect probably we're going to... We're going to start a 4-3-3 formation, like I predicted last time. Um, and of course, in goal, it's going to be Bingham. Um, in the left back, I hate to say this, but it has to be Sir Cody that, is, of course, plays in the left back. And the reason why he, of course, plays in the left back is because Lima is suspended. And I really wish he... Now I really wish Lima did not get that red card against RSL. And that red card that Lima got was a very silly red card. Um, and, you know, if you haven't seen it, go watch the highlights of game and you will see why I said that that red card was a very silly kind of red card from Lima. But Sir Cody, of course, will have to play in the left back. In terms of, of course, the center back partnership, it's still going to be Imperial and Bernardes. And, you know, I'm, I'm actually not that disappointed that Youngworth, of course, are not going to be coming back into the lineup. Mainly because I think Imperial Bernardes, I mean, both of them has really done very well and has created a very good center back partnership in the last two games. I mean, I've been really impressed. Actually, I've been really impressed with Imperial more than Bernardes mainly because I really didn't think that Imperial will come in like he would just come in into this starting lineup after having not even start a single game just do a very fine job in the last two games so I'm hoping he can keep that up and also Bernardes you know I know in the past I've been giving a lot of stick on Bernardes and all his performance and stuff like that but the fact is I really think Bernardes has had a pretty good game in these last two games he's been really big big and physical and he's really looked like the old Bernardes that we know so obviously 
that of course is going to be the center back partnership in terms of course the right back it's going to be Al Cato. and then of course moving up to the midfield in the left mid it's going to be Hika in the central midfielder um, I'm still deciding whether or not should I put Godoy or uh, Tommy Thompson in this I mean Godoy hasn't really looked that well in the last couple of games and you know maybe I probably might think about throwing Tommy Thompson into that central midfield position but having said that there has been time when we did play Thompson in that central mid position and it hasn't worked out very well so because of that I'm gonna stick with Godoy in that central mid in the right mid it's gonna be Serin and then going up forward the free forward um, in the left it's gonna be arena in the central forward position in this and the number nine row it's gonna be uh, Husin which by the way Husin in the last couple of games he has been really really decent I mean he's been kind of like informed late lately having scored um, having already scored like uh, two goals and assisted one I know he of course scored that winner against um, the Seattle Sounder in that US Open Cup and it's good to see that finally he of course can finally bang into those goals that I was really hoping we can get when we make that signing back in January so of course Houston is gonna be in there and then of course on the right it's gonna be Wondolowski and that of course is gonna be my starting 11 in terms of course the prediction of this game I mean you probably know what it's gonna be it has to be a win every time when there's a Cali Classico you know I never predict draws again against the Galaxy or lose and I really want to win this game I mean I really want some sweet revenge of what happened back in May and there has been some really crazy finish in the Cali Classical lately especially at Stanford Stadium so I think this is gonna be another one of those crazy game and I'm actually gonna go with the same prediction that I made back in uh, May where I said we were gonna win 2-1 and we're probably gonna score a late equalizer and like maybe stoppage sign or something like that I think that is gonna be happening in this game and if that actually happened boy oh my goodness I will be I would not only say that oh my god I can't believe we we, we did another Goonies magic moment in the Cali Classico but it's also say I told you so I told you that in my preview that there was gonna be a late winner but we'll see how it goes maybe that of course will be the case and maybe it's not but I hope you guys enjoyed this um, preview that I have uh, if you do make sure you guys leave a like and click that subscribe button and also make sure you guys stay tuned for my match vlog which I'm hopefully I can upload uh, right after I of course get back home I will of course do a match review um, right Right after when I get back from the Cali class go and hopefully when I do get back I will have a very kind of happy kind of review and talk about how we just got a very good sweet revenge win against the Aoi Galaxy and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it if you do make sure you guys leave a like click that subscribe button and I will of course see you guys next time